Welcome back, everybody, to the Nosebleeds podcast. I'm Chris Witt, and with me, as always, is Mr. Adam Schmidt. Adam, how are you today, sir? Excellent. As always, how are you? If I was any better, but I think I might be you. All right. Uh, <laughs> so how you doing? I, I love making a tradition out of putting my headphones on after we've already started. after we start yeah you did well though I, i'd only heard a couple ding 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 dings <laughs> as you're grabbing the mic these things are they pick up um, every touch yeah. you gotta be yeah all it's right. very very movable oh and then they, i get hooked all the time on these hooks you do get hooked i get hooked a lot i, see, I, I get getting hooked. i get way too close getting hooked like it's cocaine Oh, I was going to say Moon Rocks. Moon Rocks. Uh, a little foreshadowing for the comedy segment this afternoon, uh, morning, whenever you're listening to this. Um, so we've, uh, it's this, this last week was like a four and a half hour podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we decided uh, not a lot went on this week because we were just trying to sleep because uh, all week to make up for the time that we didn't get to sleep last week. Yeah. Um, therefore, not a lot happened. Uh, got a couple stories, a couple little things, uh, and then we'll get into our Mount Rushmore and our, our, our stuff. And, uh, I think we're bringing back the swipe, right, swipe left. Are we bringing it back? What are we going to call this? Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Adam's dating life. Uh, hey. let's start with that. Adam, did you have a date this weekend? I sure didn't. I sure didn't. When you told me you had plans, uh, for the Xavier game, was that Saturday? Yeah. Friday, oh, uh, whatever day that was, I was like, "Oh, they might have a story." I don't even remember what I did now. Oh, doesn't matter. But anyway, um, yes, no, but it was not uh, no dates, no dates. But you know, I, I I've been swiping a little bit here and there, and yeah. uh, I I've got uh, I've got at least one that I want to show you that I thought was pretty funny. All right, so we need to decide how we're going to do this going forward. Okay. Are we going to, are you going to tell me up front that, all right, this was pretty funny, or are you just going to choose one a week and I have to say right or left? Like, guess what you would have done? Uh, You know, we can do it however you like. Or do you just want to turn the app on and numero uno on the screen? Up. That might be I fun. make my decision and whatever I make, whatever decision I make, oh, you, you is, make it. whatever decision I make, <laughs> okay. uh, is, is what you have to live with for the rest of your life. You know what? That's, that's a good and a funny idea. Um, and, and you know me better than anybody. So, uh, you know, I think what I would prefer and would not prefer. Oh yeah. Probably, there, so. there could be 687 women on this mm -hmm. and you might swipe right once. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I know. Yep, that's about the ratio. Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, which is which is funny because we talked last week about last week or whenever about the difference between another guy that you knew that was on those apps and and some other He's people. Just that a, he doesn't even look at it. Right on he just everybody. Goes, right. Everybody goes right. See who you match with. Uh -huh. Yeah. Not me. Uh, okay. I think I think that that last one that you mentioned. I think that's the way we All should right. do it. We'll do that. Carrying on. You've got a picture. You've got a, a snapshot of a, a picture and a in a bio. And I'm pretty interested in uh, I'm pretty interested in that. Uh, but before we get to that, let's talk about our Reese's for the week. Adam, I've been talking about this for almost a year now, <laughs> yeah. literally almost a year. That's I'm right. saying going on 10 to 11 months. Mm -hmm. It was January, I want to say, um, when I got this. This is a Reese's cast iron skillet cookie skillet kit. I baked a cookie. In a tiny little cast iron skillet. I was supposed to cook it in a seasoned cast iron, but obviously I just opened this. So didn't I pride myself on seasoning cast iron and you didn't put any cilantro or uh that, cumin or thyme. not exactly how seasoning works, but oh pretty close. Uh I don't know. Have you do you have any cast iron? Do you do any you don't cook very often, but I don't cook. I have a skillet. Yeah. Uh I used to do some eggs once in a while, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Dude, cast iron is great. You get that thing seasoned. Oof, mm, it's ready to go, bud. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about it. Just yeah, a lot of oil, heat, iron. oil, heat, oil, heat. Burn it off, heat it, put the oil on, wipe it on there. Oh, put it in, heat it up like crazy. It'll smoke all off. Do it again. Do it like four or five times. Get a nice Ooh. coating, nice coating, and then you almost have a perfectly non-stick skillet ready to go. I know you had to be genuine Italian to cook on a skillet. Yeah. I guess so. 
I guess so. Uh, so here we go. I'm gonna check and give it a little. Give it a little. Oh, I think we're good. It's not hot. Not hot. You got the you got the oven. I I did a little I did a little test. I got your fork. I fix. I don't know if this is going to come out easy. Okay. So I uh I got a fork. I figured uh we'd see how it goes. It said it was gonna be. Oh, it said don't overcook. Did I overcook? I don't think I did. I think we're all right. Looks pretty good. Yeah. It said the middle would be soft. Uh oh, here we go. Now we're cooking. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. I get it. There we go. All right. Hey, all right. I'm going to scoop this guy out. Okay. And I'm going to give that to you. It's not hot at all. You sure? Okay. Yep. And then you figure out whatever, however you want to do that. He so said, this is me. He said it's not hot at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is my, oh, look it's, at that. It's warm. I'm hooked again. I'm hooked. <laughs> and I only got one hand. I got my, my, uh, what happens here is there's a bunch of little hooks on this microphone. And when I get too close to it, so my earphones get hooked in. All right. So Adam, you've taken a bite. I have. Um, we talked uh, briefly earlier today. And uh, as you mentioned, this is, this is going on, you know, 10 months or whatever it is. Yeah. This is a Christmas cookie from last year. <laughs> yeah. And I asked you a very Adam question. Straight uh, up Adam. Part, part, part never of my, really looked at part of my uh neuroticism or whatever however you say that mm-hmm. uh what's the uh, expiration date on this bad boy april 30th of 2023 you want to know what today's date is uh, it's the 15th of november, november 2023 so it was in a sealed package man it's like cake that stuff never goes bad you sound like my dad people put it in a <laughs> people put it in their in their their they're easy now. They're places no. that they <laughs> they dig holes and they can live in for years when the apocalypse comes. Yeah, but those have uh, those are some kind of special army treats or something, right? I mean, don't people yeah, put cake in there? Yeah, but people put cake in their cellars and their bomb shelters. Yeah, I mean, if they're in a bomb shelter and you got to be in there for like five years, you got to be able to sing happy birthday to your kids. Yep, you're and, not living in a bomb shelter. For five goods, years. box goods, bro. <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie with uh, Brandon Fraser? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, okay. What Encino Man or something? Uh, no, it's not Encino Man. Uh, they they think the Russians are bombing, so they go down in a ba- in the in the bomb shelter, and they're down there for twenty years. Wow. They come out. Dad had a buddy, Microsoft buddy, cashed in that, and all of a sudden he's a millionaire, and he's learning how to live in the nineties. Old Jed's a millionaire. Uh huh. Wow. Never saw it, uh, as is most movies. I don't even know what it's called. But okay. Um I mean this is a cookie, you know? Yeah, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go like nine seven. It just tastes like a really delicious cookie. The expiration date is in your head so hard right now, dude. It is in your head so hard. You're gonna give this like an eight nine or something. Oh, I was thinking like nine one. I knew you were gonna do that. Thank you. It's the expiration date is in your head. No, I don't. I don't know. Um, it's good. It's very good. Was um, it as good as your cookies that you made? It's okay. My, you, mine were newer. <laughs> so once again, nobody's talking about how old they were. I want to know how they tasted. Like I said, you've got the expiration date in your head. I, it, it's it, not a fair. It's not fair to the cookie. It tasted like I went to the butternut outlet store <laughs> and got some 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 almost expired bread. Uh, those little chocolate I pies know, that I come in. The, I did a pretty good job. No, I cooked it, that with love. It, it, it was I made good. it with love. I made it with it was, love. It actually cooked perfect because it was just barely crispy on the side, and it wasn't like when I cook when I cook cookies when I cook cookies I generally we'll take them out too early sometimes mm-hmm. and it's dough in the middle super gooey and and i that's great to me too I, mm-hmm. but this was actually cooked perfect all right but you're going nine one i'm gonna go nine don't I'm gonna let go, me do it don't let me talk you out of it i'm gonna go nine you one go, five you should go <laughs> four point three zero for the expiration date that it has supposed to be <laughs> oh if we're just doing expiration date i'm going yeah i'm going like a four on that um, four because April. <laughs> yes. Um, so 
No. Yeah. It, it was good. Right. It was good. I'm excited about having this new little cat piece of cast iron, though. That's probably my most excited part. Make yourself tiny eggs in that thing. I very well could be. Yeah. yeah. Very to, well will. You have to make, like, 11 batches to get anything. Yeah. I had, you want to hear, fun, did I read the directions to you? Yeah, you heard the directions. I had to use a tablespoon of beaded egg. <laughs> That's not even half of one egg. I had the most trouble getting the egg into the tablespoon scoop than I had anything. Yeah, it's slime. You can't you can't scoop part as of I egg. scooped it out. It would come. It looked like it was full, and then part of it would come out, and it would be like almost all of it. it and I'd be like, "Well, son of a gun, yeah. it's all gone." So I had to I had to do some pouring, and uh, wow. we did all right. I made a little bit of a mess, but uh, I think I cleaned it up. I hope I did. She spent a lot of time cleaning it today. <laughs> Um, just do it after, after we're done. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it taken care of. Uh, so that's the Reese's, uh, cast iron cookie skillet kit. Christmas 22. Christmas from 2022. I think I bought this in 2023. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this was like a, uh, it was in the, it was a, it was, a, it was front, at Kroger's. It was in the front of Walgreens <laughs> in one of those carts. It was at Kroger. <laughs> yeah, it was. It Everything's was. 25 yep. cents. It was, it was like a buck or something, but I got a piece of, I got a, I got a nice cast iron skillet out of it. Uh, so that's brand new. We've never done that before. Well done. Uh, nice. Good. So last week, so we did podcast on Wednesday. All the good stuff happened. Thursday, I go out of town, mm-hmm. go to a convention uh, for work uh, on Thursday in Columbus, a uh, lot of fun, good time, good people. Uh, and I get up there and I meet uh, two guys that I work with. Okay. One is uh, uh, 70. He'll be 72 in a, in a couple months. One is in his 50s. And great guys. And uh, they're showing me around the place. And I get there. And the older gentleman uh, has been around for a long time. At work. Sounds like it. I mean, obviously, but I've known him. He's, he's been very good to me. He helped me get to where I'm at right now. Uh, he's given me a lot of opportunities. So, so I'm very fond of him. Right. I call him pops. Of course I call, I feel like I call everybody pops, but I call him pops. Uh, and so I get there and I'm like, Hey, what's going on pops? And he's kind of talking to me. I'm like, this something doesn't look right. We're talking to some people while we're there. Cause these two guys know everybody in this convention. It's at Columbus's convention center is a giant place and they know everyone hmm. and some guys talking to him and he just walks away. And I was like, mm, something's wrong. So I start following him. I said, what's up? He's like, I think I need to sit down I'm real pale. I go, all right, uh, there's chairs here stacked up. I'll climb on top of that stack of chairs, get you a chair, bud. We no, I'm going to go out front. There's a couch. I said, I'm walking with you. I don't know anybody here. I'm just here to kind of check it out. So we leave the other guy, walk out there with him and not looking hot, man. Talking to him a little bit, trying to see, you know, and he's giving me little short answers. And he goes, I think I'm going to go lay down. And I said, man, what is going, what, what's, what's going on? And uh, I said, I'm you want me to walk you to your room. He's like, no. Well, the night before they had a little party, right? Mm-hmm. There's a little party. All the guys, all the vendors are there. It's our vendors. So, uh, you know, 72 years old, you don't get out and stay out till one o'clock in the morning very often. Sure. Old boy had, uh, some people don't at 41 either. Yeah, it's very true. He had uh, a few more beers than he's used to, I believe. And, uh, he was out till about one 30. Uh, I mean, he, I think he stopped drinking earlier than that, but he was out till one 30. So he's already really tired compared to normal. Cause he's 72. He probably goes to bed at seven, uh, seven 20. I assume. There you go. Uh, so I'm like, man. Something's going on. A lot of beer. Maybe he's got some blood sugar stuff going on. Mm-hmm. I know he. I know he takes some some of the the, the diabetes. Di, di, diabetes. How did, how does that guy say diabetes? Oh, diabetes. Diabetes. Yeah, you know he's got a little touch of the diabetes. Um. <laughs> so he he says he doesn't need me to walk into his room, but I followed him to the elevator just to make sure he didn't fall out. Uh, and I walk back in and I'm like, man, Jim didn't look good. And I wonder if he's got some blood sugar stuff going. And I. I called him up. He said, oh, I'm going to take this one medicine that if my blood sugar is too high, it brings it down. I said, what's your blood sugar at? I don't know. I forgot my little pricker blood tester. And you're going to take something that brings your blood sugar down. What if your sugar's down? Mm-hmm. That's no good. I didn't say that to him, but I was thinking it. Can you, can you tell the difference? Like, I assume he feels the difference. Yeah. I assume that. Right. So I'm sitting there. I'm talking to these guys 
And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm nerd. I'm, I'm about to go get like, this is my boy right here. You know, I'm about to, I'm about to just go to Walgreens and see if they'll just give me a kit. I don't know how it works. I mean, just prick your finger, right? Say, hey, give me a kit. Can I get a knife and a stick or, or a, a piece of tape or, or a piece of paper and, and a, and a thing to stick it in? I get, dude, this is crazy. So first off, I, I walk a half a mile to Walgreens, get to this Walgreens, and I'm talking to my wife, and she's like, I'm pretty sure you got to have a prescription for that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, if I got to have a prescription, I'm just going to tell them some dude dying. I don't know. See what happens. You don't have to have a prescription. It just makes it way cheaper. So we go over, me and this other young lady at the at the pharmacy, and I'm like, what do I got to get? She's like, well, good question. This is a kit. Let's see what's in it. Well, nothing comes with everything. Ah. Nothing does. So I had to buy the smallest box of the prickers. It's 50 of these little prickers in it. 50 of them. Come to find out he uses one for like a week. I was like, eh, aren't you going to get AIDS or something? He's like, I'm not sharing it with anybody. <laughs> I was like, oh, it makes sense. <laughs> I don't think you can give yourself AIDS. You can't give yourself AIDS. Uh, so he, he's got the, a million of these. So I got a box of 50 of these prickers. I got a box of 20 of the little strips that you drop the drop of blood on. And then I had to buy the tester. Got them all a little deal for him. Got them all set up. Get up there. He does it. His sugar was, was, was a little high, but it was good. And he had just taken the downer medicine. So I'm feeling better. Okay. okay. Is he I just feeling, say, you're feeling better. Is he feeling better? No, okay. he's not. I just saved your life. <laughs> you're supposed to be like, oh, you're the greatest human being in the world. Thank Let's you so much. Let's go back down and have some Let's beers. go chill, right? Let's go party. <laughs> no. No, he's like, I think I'm just going to stay here and go to sleep. I'm like, all right, I will get you some food. Let me know what you want. Bring it up for you. I'm supposed to have just saved your life, man. I, 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 I hate to say this. Go ahead. You hear, I feel like you hear stories like this, and sometimes these stories are like, and then he said, I'm just going to go to sleep. And then that's the no, last I mean, time I, I ever talked to I wouldn't be talking like this, but I'll tell I you know. this. So before I go to get <laughs> that, before I, I go about. to get the prickers and all that stuff, I'm talking about doing it. I'm like, man, maybe I should just go get one of these kids. I bet they make a kid. I know, you know, Aaron, when she was pregnant, she had the, the, the pregnant diabetes, mm-hmm. you know, where it goes away after you have a kid. Yeah. So I've seen it all kind of know, understand a little bit. I know you got to buy a thing to stick you, a thing to put the blood on and a thing to stick the blood into to tell you. I know how it works that way. I just don't know how it works. Like, do all the things talk to each other? Do I got the right stuff that meet up? So anyway, so I'm just kind of talking about it with a bunch of guys that are sitting down there. It's cocktail hour now, right? The, the show's done. Now we're cocktail hour. And one guy's like, look, did you hear about Billy Joe Harmony out in British Columbia six months ago? We had a show just like this. And other guys are like, oh, my God, it was tall. And I'm like, what? What's going on? Who's Billy Joe? What's the? BJH passed BJ, off. BJ uh, went to bed. Didn't get up. Didn't get up at the show. Went to bed, bumped his head, couldn't get up in the couldn't morning. Couldn't get up in the morning. Dang. Yeah. Yeah, except he didn't bump. Well, he might have bumped his head after he had a after his heart gave out. That's what happened to Bob Saget. That, he bumped his head. Bumped his head and couldn't get up. get up in the morning. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, well, now I'm definitely going. So now I'm like humping it. To Walgreens. I'm like, there's Walgreens a half mile away. I can cut through this little thing, make it a little bit shorter. So I'm like, I'm going to walk. Now, first off, I got my dress shoes on. I've had the biggest blister on the bottom of my foot right now because I was walking in these shoes. And then I had a wedding two nights later, and my shoe was talking. I didn't realize it. I lost the front. The Uh the sole of my shoe came off. Don't worry. Dude at the wedding table got me some super glue. Super glued my shoe together, and I'm still wearing it Where today. Where do you get super glue at a wedding? At a, we're at the Radisson in Covington, the spinning restaurant. And this dude that was sitting at our table, so this is crazy. So I jump up, and I know all my boys. I know how these dudes are. I got to tell them right now what's going on with my shoe, or else I'm going to be fucked. I'm made fun of all night long. Yeah. So I, I'm always trying to jump the gun on anything somebody can make fun of me for. Because uh-huh. if I make fun of myself first, boom, it makes everything it. easy, right? Sure. It's, it's key to my life, right? Yeah. That's how I've gotten. It's pretty much self-deprecation is how I've gotten to where I am in life right now. Sure. I use it in every single phase of my life every single day. So 
I'm talking to these guys. I'm like, you believe this? Oh my God. And I turn around and I'm looking at my wife at a at, back at our table. I'm like, geez, oh Pete. And this dude is super gluing his wife's shoe. The exact same thing happened. She was sitting right next to me at the table. I said, what? He's like, man, I'm in maintenance. I just found a guy in maintenance. I knew he'd have super glue and it's the high octane. They just didn't have an applicator or a, not an applicator, uh, an activator. I was like, does that mean it won't work? He's like, no, just makes it work faster. I was like, I'm going with you everywhere for now on. So there, was there an elf under that table just ripping, ripping shoes? shoes yeah, I don't know if it was the cobbler's dudes or what, because yeah. they just wanted to try to make some money. Dude, hers was almost all the way off. Mine was just like the toes. <laughs> so I get that thing glued up. I stick it under my chair. I got one shoe on, one shoe off, talking to people, having a blast, telling everybody what I'm doing, because I got to. Because yeah. if this doesn't work, I'm going to be out on the dance floor no matter what. Like, I don't yeah. care. But <laughs> I might have no shoes. I might have one shoe. I might have a <laughs> floppy shoe talking to everybody. So anyway, uh, it worked. Uh, I left it there for a very long time, and it still works tonight. So anyway, my feet hurt. Go to Walgreens. Get all the stuff. Because this dude scared me to death. Like, oh, sure. My dude that I've known for ever is going to be. And then I got to deal with his wife because his wife is going to be like, what happened? And then she's a, like my mom, like my grandma. Like, I love like she's. Oh, were these people at your birthday yeah, party? Yeah, they were. I think I saw them. Yeah, you probably saw them. They're at my birthday. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm All this is going through my head. I'm calling Aaron, figuring this out. Wakes up the next morning. Calls me. Seven o'clock. So what's up, bub? Of course, I didn't get in bed till 4.30. Whoa! He says, what's up, bud? I said, how you doing? He goes, you think you can go get me some Pepto-Bismol? And I was like, what? He's like, I think I got... He goes, I've been up every hour on the hour dropping a deuce in this toilet. I, I'm scared to go to sleep. I'm 72 years old. I don't know if I can hold it. Oh, my God. Oh, man. The whole turns out the whole time he had some kind of food poisoning or oh, something. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I thought I saved him with his blood pressure... <laughs> Bricker, he got so he got his. I didn't get him his Pepto. Thank God the other guy was up because I fell back asleep right after he called me and I was like, Oh crap, I was supposed to go get his Pepto. The other guy got it for him. So he leaves around 10 o'clock. I'm calling him, calling, making sure he's all right. Call him as soon as he gets in there. He made it home, hour and a half, never dropped it, never had it. He, I said, How you feeling? He goes, I'll tell you in about an hour. <laughs> 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 all right jimmy all after right. my next bm i'll let you know yeah. so i thought i saved somebody's life turns out he just had a little a little touch of food poisoning you know when you were uh talking when you started talking about the part where you were you walked to walgreens in your shoes in your dress shoes and you, you got these blisters on your feet you're going to save this man's life get his life-saving medicine for him i i'm picturing you walking through for some reason it's snowing heavily <laughs> in my in my mind <laughs> and you're walking you're walking miles and miles to this walgreens and there's a this a soundtrack of enrique iglesias's uh hero i can be, be your, your hero, hero baby. baby and you're just walking I can yeah. wash away the pain oh yeah that's right that's right are we still going or no oh you go ahead i don't know i just <laughs> wait for you now um uh Forever. that's right you can take my breath away yeah you got to finish that part that's right yeah you got to finish that part uh anyway that's the soundtrack that was playing in in that scene that yeah. i saw and Dude, i was walking through like central park mm -hmm. we're downtown columbus and i'm like that's in new york <laughs> i know but there's this random park in my my google walking direction it says make a right and down the path it said make a right on the path i was like it's starting to get dark <laughs> I'm going through Central Park. Let's roll. Went through Central Park, a couple monuments in there, come out on the other side of Central Park. Middle of the ghetto. Ready to go. Wow. I was I went through. I I mean I could have died trying to save his life. I'll tell you. I could have. I mean, wouldn't have that that would have been crazy. Yeah. Dying saving someone's life. I mean, and then know, someone some... sees you dying and saves your life. Oh my gosh. It's a never ending circle. Yeah. This is the circle of life we're talking about now. That's right. It's the circle of life or the, or the chain of life or the, uh, human centipede of life. Ooh. You ever watch that? No, I got roped into watching that. Oh, this, uh, so this is like when it first came out. So I didn't even, I'd never heard of it. I don't know what's going on. 
They're just like, you want to watch Human Centipede? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't watch anything, but okay. Now, I knew because the people are always trying to get me to watch like horror, scary movies, mm-hmm. and they know I hate it. So, holy cow. Let me tell you. Can I tell you what happens in this movie? I, I've heard, I've heard, uh, I think I've heard about it and I've seen references to it and, and yeah. people have done even comedy sketches about yeah, it and they, stuff, but, uh, go ahead. You want to know? Go ahead, so, little, so this doctor, synopsis. this doctor gets these three people, a dude and two women, and he sews, he, he knocks them out, whatever, you know, sews their mouth to the other person's butthole. Yeah. So like you can't can't not just have, you know, I don't know if they I'll tell you what you can't put have. a little tongue around there. Like I'll tell- I wouldn't be tonguing around there because I'd be too scared that it would activate the sphincter. I'll cu- I'll tell you what you can't have. What's that? Is the stuff he knows. Is the stuff he knows is right. That's exactly <laughs> right. Because you ain't breathing. No. <laughs> so he makes the dude eat. He's like, you have to feed the fuck the. Sorry, I almost dropped an f bomb. You have to feed the centipede. I haven't even had anything to drink today. It's just the, talking about this. Gets me into yeah. that. He's like, you got to feed the centipede. Oh. You got to feed the others, right? You eat, and it feeds the line. So, so he's eating, and he's he can talk. The other two are just oh, 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 because they can't talk because they can't move their mouth or whatever, and. Uh, the part of the movie when he's like, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. And the girl in the back's eyes get, get this big. And, <laughs> oh, my God. And then she dies. The one in the back dies. So it's just him. And he's like dragging two people. And he ends up killing this dude, the doctor, and sneaks out the back. Does he like cut the girls off? No, I don't think so. He I can't drags remember. Him out? I don't remember how that part goes. He might have. I don't know. I don't think so. Poopy carcasses. I don't know if the last one ever got fed. That's why she died. She never There's got fed. Thing. It was like they were there for like five days. Oh, she never got fed. I'll tell you why she never got the last one never got fed because the the second one takes in the feces and throws it right back up, right back into his. No, she throws it up, but it can't go in. He's closed up, dude. Sphincter's tight. Well, He's not letting anything in there, or oh, maybe so a couple drips. On her. So it's in there. She's choking. She ends up. Cho- I think she ends up choking on her own vomit. Okay, that makes and sense. dying. I'm yeah, pretty sure that's good. how it has. Yeah. yeah, good job by the by the story writers, the uh, yeah. script writers on that. I mean, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty graphic. It's pretty graphic. Yeah, I don't ever want to see it. Me neither. I'm so <laughs> mad that I did. So mad that I've actually seen that. Hey, I got to tell you something. Speaking of scary movies, I mean, was it, did they do the, the lighting and the music and the sure. stuff to yeah, make it kind of scary? So, where's my phone? Here it is. That that reminds me, Chris, that <clears throat> old, uh, oh, yes. what's her name? What's, what's her, her name? Oh, this is Shelby. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, so we're not. Oh, this is. Oh, this so, is the fire. So, this is the fire stick let, here. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You read. It. No, you. You want to tell? You want me to tell you? Go ahead. Uh, you read that. You read that little bio. So, uh, so this is not. We were looking at. We were looking at the bumblebee last time. That's right. And that's where the girl contacts the guy. Once first. you match, yeah. Yeah, and then she can text you or whatever. However, it works. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, did you know that these kids nobody texts anymore? What are they doing now? They use their chat snap to send messages oh, to each other. Yeah. yeah. Didn't realize that. Oh, geez. I like 80s horror movies. There you go. There's number one. So what is NU metal? New metal. New metal, I guess. Looking at her, she likes metal. Mm-hmm. Uh, bugs. Oh, yeah. This is Adam. So much. Bugs. 80s, 80s horror. Who likes bugs? The metal may not be bad, but she just bugs what do you call there's a, there's some sort of scientist that studies bugs right uh sure a bugologist uh, or something yeah uh she's not that i can tell you that right now <laughs> she's not that she's got safety pins in her hair man is that too much detail where's this person from do you remember uh, i mean somewhere close by all but right I all right know. so maybe we'll name her um it's uh, too late for that belshi <laughs> uh <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sports. Hello, check mark. That's a swipe right. Swipe it right. 
<laughs> Don't worry, there's more things that they're into. <laughs> Wait till you see what she doesn't like. Chicken wings. She's, she does like chicken wings. Uh, you know what else she's kind into? Funny to say that. This is my favorite thing to say because uh, she's a 30-year-old white girl with black hair that's obviously not a real hair color and little pieces of pink inside of it and safety pins in her hair and she likes hood rat stuff hood rat stuff <laughs> what is hood rat what she stuff? wrote what is hood rat stuff <laughs> this is what you deal with on an everyday basis and being really cool all right so i'm gonna have to ask you this <laughs> what's a bootlicker I don't know that. Man, we call this guy bootlegger. There's a guy. Oh, our, you use that? You there's a guy, no, there's a guy in our industry. They've been calling bootlegger forever. And somebody told uh, me the story one time. And I don't remember what the story is. But they all call this dude boot, bootlegger. So I'm just like, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll be talking. I'll be like, man, bootlegger ain't got none of that. Give me a call. I got plenty in stock. Don't even call it bootlegger. And there, the guy will be like, Psh, I forgot about bootlegger. <laughs> and I'll be like, I love that. I have no idea. But she doesn't like bootlicker, so it sounds like tree hugger or uh I'm thinking bootlicker's kinda like uh kiss ass. Okay. Like like you you know, you got a uh you butt kisser, bootlicker, you're you're trying to you're you're all yeah. Uh doesn't like cops. I don't know why I mean but, t- just just all just cops. in general. <laughs> I don't care if you're the cool let me tell you something. My old roommate, his brother is a cop. Number one, never would have thought he'd become a cop. Guarantee coolest cop you ever met in your entire life. Guarantee every single he's a drummer in a band that plays all the time. Anyway, uh bug killers doesn't like bug killers. No, because no. she likes bugs. She likes bugs. So I can't step on an ant. Uh, uh probably not. Mm. Sounds like <clears throat> wonder what would happen. Oh, we're in trouble. I'm in trouble. You're not in trouble. I'm in trouble. Uh Disney Marvel adults. That's weird. That's First so off, that's funny. so weird. She <laughs> she does not like Disney Marvel adults. Don't know what that even means. I guess that's people that are into comic books are going to Disney. Uh, uh, yeah. So she doesn't like fun. I mean, I don't like the. I mean, I'm not like a big hoopla Marvel guy or Disney by any means. But I mean, if the guy wants to have fun, <laughs> now some people can't help this though. This isn't very cool. I know. Why does she not like receding hairlines? I don't to say that. I mean, is this the actual app or is this a screenshot? That's a screenshot. Okay, good. So I can swipe. <laughs> I can swipe to see the next. Is yeah. there more? No, I think that's. Oh, it. that's it. Okay. Yeah. Man. Oh no. Oh man. Oh. That is a. Uh, that is super disappointing. <laughs> I mean, the stuff that you like and dislike uh, is was hilarious to me. I don't know. I, I just thought it was. So did you swipe right or left? I mean, I mean, it was a hard left for you. I mean, it's so funny to watch uh, to see that this is what you deal with on an everyday basis. Is it more of that? Is that what most of it is? No, no, that's a that's a goofy one. <clears throat> that's a goofy one. But you do end up seeing uh, plenty of those. Yeah, you know, not oh, yeah. it's not the majority, but yeah, I, I'm gonna. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna to try to find every one of those and, and screenshot yes. them for you, pal. Is that the that's the Tinder snap? Mm-hmm. That's Tinder. Yeah, that's the Tinder snap. Yeah. Okay. The worst one. That's you know, awesome. Sorry, Tinder's not sponsoring us, so I can say it. Yeah, we can say whatever. Oh, is Tinder the worst one? It is the worst one. It is. Yeah. 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 There's nothing good there. Nah. Nothing good there. Nah. All right. Uh, I, what, do we have anything else going on for the podcast today? Did anything happen to you this week? You know what's funny is I talked to you on my drive home from work today as we're we're kind of planning this thing. Yeah. And uh, probably ten minutes after we got off the phone, I pull off the highway, and uh, I see I'm I'm at a light, and I see up ahead, in the middle of some a wooded area. Yeah. Big black smoke coming up. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that's that's billowy black smoke. Billowy. And so I Billow what? Billow Billowy is Bill O'Reilly's shortened name. Oh, I thought it was just below the canopy of the forest. Yeah. And that's and that's part of it. That's where Bill O'Reilly got his nickname Billowy is because he used to he grew up in the below the canopy of the forest. Yeah. I got you. Like Chrissy or Adam E or Joey. It's Billowy. Right. So billowy smoke, uh, rising up and I, and, and I'm so 
I feel like I can kind of see enough through the through the woods where I just see like a couple of red lights flashing. So it looked like there was an emergency vehicle there already. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out, is this in the woods or are there is there a house back there? Where is this? There's certainly a fire. Yeah. Um, and so light goes. I, I go through the light. There's a an emergency, another emergency vehicle that flies past me. Oh, that siren on. Whoa. What? Oh, my gosh. So it goes by. And then I turn where I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to be able to see up in, in this place, you know, as I'm driving by a little bit better. So I do, there's a little side street that goes up just in, just dead ends into some apartment buildings Yeah, back there. And there was an apartment building that was on fire. Oh, wow. And so I start driving up Montana Avenue and two more fire trucks are racing down the hill. And so 30 minutes before I came over here, I get a message, an alert that says, 13 families displaced from their home and uh wow. and big fire and and uh what's it called down there north side wow that's a good size that's a good size little fire right there yeah yeah man big fire oh, i saw it like right must have been up right after it started happening man yeah that's too bad feel bad for those families man yeah. I hope everything works out all right you didn't try to go say, I mean, as a hero, Here's I would have gone to go say, you know, it's so funny because you and I talked about this hero thing yeah. for that. I'm dri- I'm driving and I look up there and I'm like, okay, I see these fire trucks coming down. I had a little daydream as I'm driving about Save stopping. Yeah. Stopping up there and saying, all right, what do you guys need me to do? Yeah. And I get, and I, and I yeah. go into the place and Those I start are my pulling favorite. people out. Like when you you're just sitting there and you're just chilling, yeah. not sleeping, not a dream, a daydream. So you got to think this thing up. It's right? a daydream. Yeah. A daydream. You're thinking it up. It's mm-hmm. not something that just popped into your brain. Well, I mean, it popped into your brain, but you created it on the fly. <laughs> Sure. You can control how you're feeling in this thing, right? You Kinda can control good. it because it's a daydream. Yeah. Night dream, you wake up like that was crazy. Mm-hmm. Good for you. I feel like you became a hero. In the in my dream, I was. Yeah. Yeah. But it was during the day, so yeah. it makes it real. <laughs> yeah. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't do anything. Actually, you did stuff. I didn't do stuff. <laughs> I did I did hood rat stuff, but I didn't do anything. <laughs> Any, <laughs> anyway, you're getting more on Belshi's wavelength every day, <laughs> Bob. Belshi is so funny. That's funnier than anything she said in her thing. <laughs> That's funnier than not liking uh, receding hairlines. <laughs> Why would you put that? I did not like receding. I'd be like, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a picture of myself real quick, and I'm gonna show you this. But here's the deal. I'm also gonna put a picture of when I was like eight years old. And I still, my hair was the same way. This ain't receding. This just is what it is. Can you imagine if if I or any other guy put on my dating profile, I don't like fat guts. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I can't control my hairline. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> uh, it's just, I don't, I, <laughs> I don't like women that are losing their hair. Yeah. Yeah. I don't sure. like, I don't like women with big noses. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> right. We can't both have one. <laughs> it's gonna make making out real weird. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have to figure this out. Am I going right? You going left? There ain't gonna be no back and forth. All right. There ain't no swinging heads. We ain't swinging back and forth. We're just gonna be blowing each other kisses from across the room. That's right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll be we'll blow kisses from across the room and at the same exact same time be giving Eskimo kisses from across the room. I mean, this is getting crazy, mm-hmm. and we just got to go to Mount Rushmore. All right, Mount Rushmore. <laughs> this week's Mount Rushmore uh, is uh, – so So let's let's go back and talk about this. I know. So, <laughs> I changed my mind four times. Yeah. So where we want to talk about this, we – it's – this is the greatest players that ever became coaches, not – any player that he's not, not the best coaches that were players. Cause I mean, that's right. So all of the best coaches at some time were players. Were players. Uh, uh, yes. So like I feel Jackson was a player, but he wasn't the best player to ever become a coach. Right. Right. So I, so that's the thing. I, yes. It's players who became coaches. Okay. All right. That yeah. sounds good. And, and I, I, but I feel like I was weighing in 
the success of their coaching career as well. You did weigh I was in trying that. to do that. Okay, so that would take Magic Johnson off the list then. Yeah. Right? I mean, 16 games. Also, Isaiah Thomas. Yeah, but at least Isaiah Thomas got a couple seasons in. They weren't good. Yeah, they may not have been good, but at least he, you know, he coached for more than more than a quarter games. of the season. Not even that's a some quarter real, of the That's season. some real Tony Perez numbers there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's no joke. I don't care who you are. That's no joke. <laughs> um, okay, so Magic Johnson had a killer record, by the way. Yeah. Five and eleven. Coaching the Lakers. Coaching yep. the the I, I want to say that might have been Nick Van Exel's second year, maybe. I don't um, remember. It was 93. I had no idea that, that he coached at all. I never knew that he I mean it was only 16 games, so it was pretty quick anyway, but what is that? So they fired somebody and they're just like, yo, Magic, you want to take the last 16 games of the season? I think he decided oh, he not middle? to do it, I want to say. Oh. I think he decided, never mind, this isn't for me. I'm going to the front office or whatever. I'm way too um, – I, I expect – I mean, he was just getting done playing. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. A couple years out of playing. So he was – 91, I think, was when he had to retire – when he when he found so out he, he had came back and coached. Maybe he only coached for sixteen games, and they're like, "You're clear to play, bro." And then he came back and started playing. Um, no, it was so ninety. So ninety. No, it had to be the ninety one ninety two season because he played in ninety one in the ninety one finals against Michael and the Bulls when they won their first one. The next season was when he. Had to retire because he caught a case. Because he caught a case, and <clears throat> he's doing some hood rat stuff, and he caught a case. Yeah, he was, <laughs> <laughs> and he had to Him take crack a thug. He had to take a leave of absence, so to speak. And um, but then he came back for the All Star game that year. Played in the All Star game, if you remember that, and then uh, played for the Dream Team at yeah. the end of that that next summer. Yes. And then was off for the next, and then, so that was the 92, that was 90, summer of 92 was the dream team. So 92, 93 season, I think he didn't do anything, I'm pretty sure. And then 93, 94 became the coach hmm. for 16 games or whatever it was. And then 90, 94, 95 or 95, 96 season, he came back and played for a season or half a season or something like that. Played again. Okay. A fatter version of Magic Johnson. Yeah. Yes. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I mean, the, the, for me, if you go back and look at this, I mean, there, the, I, I, I feel like this is, I feel like it's pretty, pretty easy. Think so? I do. This you want me to give easy. you mine? This was really hard to me. So this will be really hard for you. But you put, I think you put too much on their coaching records probably because for me it's pretty simple if you and i'll take i'll take magic out of it because i don't even consider him a coach okay um i go uh the two obvious ones bill russell larry bird mm -hmm. got to be in there and um jerry west has to be in there right yeah i mean you're talking about the logo mm -hmm. um and then those are the three I had Isaiah written down, but you've almost talked me out of <laughs> Isaiah Thomas. He lost a lot of games, man. Lost a lot of games. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you got guys like Jason Kidd, Bob Cousy, Elgin Baylor. Those are all guys. All of them have losing records, I believe. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, you wrote down. I mean, <laughs> I've got a list here of. 25 hall of famers that became coaches. Yeah. And I'm sure it's the same one. So that's how you go. But in, you know, you got Lenny Wilkins has the most wins out of all of them, but that's no, I I'm going with the best players that actually coached. I'm not counting 16 games. That doesn't count. Uh, so magic, Bob Pettit, Dennis Johnson, sorry, microwave. No, he's not the microwave. Vinny Johnson. Vinny, microwave. Yeah. Um, Bob how's your, Lanier. How's your, how's your Vinny Johnson shirt? Doing it's a little that? snug. I still got it. It's, <laughs> it's a little snug. It's a little snug, but I still got it. Uh, and we're going to get into that. It was I snug five years ago. It was. Did that. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about that today, too, because that's one thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, so I'm taking Bob Lanier, Dennis Johnson, Magic Johnson, and Bob Pettit off. Okay. None of them 
uh, we're over 40 games, never even coached half a season. So okay. if you didn't coach for half a, you have to coach for a full season for me to consider you in on this. Okay. So, uh, Larry bird is going to be on mine. Um, Bill Russell was on mine. You got guys like Kevin McHale. These are all great players. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. I'm going to. Did you talk me out of Isaiah Thomas? I I'm, also just don't like Isaiah. I'm Thomas. going. So I'm going Jerry West and Jason Kidd. Okay, I like that. Jerry West, Jason Kidd. I love the Jason Kidd thing. He hasn't. He hasn't had a ton of success really yet as a coach. He, he has, has had some good. But when you look at the best players that have become coaches, that dude, I'm telling you, multiple multiple MVPs, at least one MVP. Jason Kidd. Yeah. I don't think he ever won an MVP, but Jason Kidd didn't win an MVP. No. Oh, I'm thinking Steve Nash. Steve Nash could be on there though. Kevin Nash. Steve Nash, Steve Nash, Kevin Nash, <laughs> Steve Nash. Steve Steve Nash will eventually be in the Hall of Fame. He's just As not in yet. Easy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. just not in yet. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he couldn't be on this list. Right. He could still be on this list. Mm -hmm. I still th uh, is Steve Nash better than? No, I'm still going Jason Kidd. So you take Jason Kidd over Steve Nash as a player? Uh, I take him. I, I don't think Steve Nash coached long enough. What do you get? Okay, a season. So you're so your coach two seasons does come in. It's got to be the... two seasons. It has to be two seasons now. That's right. It's got to go two full. Oh, seasons. it has to go two full seasons. Two full okay. seasons to be considered now. All right. My uh, criteria just changes every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> okay. Two full seasons. That's all right. So we're good with everybody I picked. Okay. Um, I'm going, and I did. I I, I did factor in. Now it's not going to be a perfect. It's not going to be a perfect thing. I'm not going to be able to get the the best players or the best coaches. It's not going to work out that way. But I did have Larry and, and Bill Russell as num number one and number two. Um, Larry only coached three seasons, by the way. He just barely makes your criteria now. Not barely. He made it by uh, 82 games. That's a lot of games <laughs> okay. compared was, to some of these guys. Even more than that because he yeah. coached in the playoffs. Very first year of ever coaching anything in his whole life, won NBA Coach of the Year. Uh, does that surprise you at no. all? It's... No. Uh, second year, I think they might have lost in the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, which they did the, the first year as well. And then the third year, they went to the finals for the first time in Pacers NBA history, I think. I think they they played in the uh, ABA finals, but uh, okay. NBA finals, I'm pretty sure, it was the first time. And unfortunately, lost to the Lakers. Ainge decided he was done. Great. Like, he's in the he's like, Eastern Conference it. finals everywhere. He's like, you know what? I think I proved. I think I proved who I am here. Mm -hmm. I think I'm good. So he he won MVP. He's the only player, to the only person to ever win MVP uh, coach of the year and executive of the year. Wow. Yeah. Good for him. But <clears throat> let me tell you that the first guy to ever be inducted into the hall of fame, both, both player and coach. You're going there. Leonard Wilkins. Yep. I'm going to do it because Lenny Wilkins was a nine time all-star. Wow, that's actually pretty he good. He played 15 years. He was a nine-time All-Star. He led the league in assists one year. He was All-Star MVP one year in 71. He, um, he, I don't know if he ever won a title or not as a player, but uh, is third all-time in coaching wins and was number one for a long time um, until uh, Don Nelson uh, passed him, I believe, and, and then Pop. uh, Greg Popovich. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, Lenny Wilkins. And Larry Bird and Bill Russell, and my my third, my fourth is is up for debate. I still, I mean, I I'm, I mean, you got some great players out there. I was close on Jason Kidd, um, Bob Cousy. Even thinking about Kevin McHale, Kevin McHale. Uh huh. I, you know, Jerry West is tough. To, I didn't I didn't get a chance to look at his Jerry team. West. Jerry West was over five hundred as a coach, which is already better than a lot of the guys we've said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he also was smart enough to know that he needed to walk away and hire someone else so the Showtime Lakers could be who they are. And became uh, one of the great executives, executives ever. of all time. Yeah. yeah. And still is. <clears throat> I don't know. Is he? Is he still in the front office with – he's not with the Lakers, though. He's with somebody else. Uh, no, he's with uh, Sacramento, maybe? Nah. I can't remember now. Let's put uh, – hmm. Yeah, let's put Jerry West on there. I'll that a boy. Right. That a boy. Yep. Yep. I agree with that. I agree with Jerry West. Yeah. I think we had all but one same, right? No. Yeah. I didn't have Jason Kidd. Or I had Jason Kidd. You had Lenny Wilkins. Lenny Wilkins. Yep. 
Yeah. yeah. All there right. I feel a little better about that then. Yeah. We got the same. Yeah. Mostly. Yeah. Still had one different, which makes it a little bit better. Yeah. No Mo Cheeks, though. No Mo Cheeks. No Mo Cheeks. No Wes Unseld. No Dan Issel. No Dave Cowens. No Bob Cousy. No Elgin Baylor. No Dennis Johnson. No Bob Pettit. No Bob Lanier. No Casey Jones. No Tom Heinsohn. No Phil Jackson. No Pat Riley or Don Nelson or Doc Rivers or Jerry I mean, Phil's, or Phil's, Mike Dunleavy or Rudy Tom Janovich. Phil's got to be a tough one, though. Phil, Phil's a tough one because obviously, his, well, he and Pat coach, Riley both as coaches, but they were both they averaged they both averaged like six and seven points a game for their careers. Yeah, yeah. And, and they players and they played they both played six or seven years. It wasn't like they had crazy unbelievable, but they were, you know, it was a whole bunch of. Uh, I think they were probably pretty decent players. Bunch of back Steve then. Kerr's maybe. Maybe I think they. I mean, they did different things. They weren't well. Yeah, I'm just but, saying, like they're the the time frame of what they were. Like they were, you maybe, know, yeah. six seven years in the league, role players at best, and Steve Kerr, another guy you could put on this list. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, just you know, is what it is. All right, well done. But are you going to say that Steve Kerr was a better player than any of those other people? No, no chance. No. All right. I think we did pretty well then in that case. Um, that moves us on to a fellow by the name of, what's his name? Barbosa. Ralph Barbosa. Ralph. Ralph. Ralph Barbosa. Hey, Ralphie. Uh, Ralph is a hair cutter. He's a dishwasher. And, uh, and he's a, a comedian. and he's a comedian that likes to be a uh, passenger prince. <laughs> That's right. The story took a little long. It took a I'm going to say the story took a little long. This guy, so... So I, uh, all right, I'll, I'll just start off. We'll just talk about it together. Mm -hmm. Um, I finished it while we were down here, (laughs) uh, waiting to go on tonight. Moments ago. Moments ago. Ralph is a, um, the guy's got these, I like his timing. He's got good comedic timing. He's that. So it depends on what kind of comedy you like, because there's going to be people that will think he's the funniest person in the world. And there are people that will think this is terrible. I truly believe that there are people that would go either way on this because it's that he's real dry. He's real monotone. It's you got to understand what he's saying and you can't not, you can't understand him. I mean, like you got, I mean, sometimes you got to think a little bit. It takes a second, you know, he's, he sets his joke. I think he sets his jokes up very well. Um, I thought he had great timing with him. He knew he didn't, he definitely didn't rush. There's no rushing involved at all, which is a good thing. Yes. Uh, which, is uh, he seemed super comfortable up there and i thought he i thought he did well i thought he did well did i belly laugh and really hard laugh at anything no have to say funny things if you're going to be low in, in ma- ma- as a matter of fact and we may have just may- lost ours make this short and sweet now because we have no idea what's going on. Uh, Adam? We're, we're about to find out what happens with this This thing. is going to be so fun. Uh, nobody knows. The Zoom just deleted in the middle. But uh, all, then it decided it was coming back and said recording in progress. So not sure where it went. I'm going to go ahead and say that I gave Rafi Barbosa a 3.2. I gave him a 3.4. Oh, very close. Uh, yours is actually a little better because 2.5 is your middle, right? Uh, or is that my yes. middle? Yeah, yeah two five yeah. is my middle. Yeah. yeah, so three is mine. I gave him a little above average or a little above average. I think that was a pretty good score. Yeah, I think it was pretty good. I, I I would definitely tell people to watch it. Me too, Adam. Me too. I don't know if any of this is going to be part of this podcast or not because of the way this all went down just a second ago. <laughs> but, but, do you have uh, a comedy special for us for next week? I am going to pull one up now. I did see that a uh, young fella uh, who is on fire right now uh, just came out today. Matt Rife. 
Yeah. Uh, we're not going to do that one. You don't like Matt Reif. I am- Matt Reif is a Matt Reif is a um, like you like Big J Okerson does crowd work. Yes. Matt Reif. Like it's I've been watching some stuff that he's done. He's almost kind of like it, it, he doesn't it, he's over it. Like he did it for so he did. That was a big part of his shows. Now people just scream stuff out yeah. at him. And it's kind of, you can tell it irritates the crap out. It's starting to irritate him. He's starting to not like it. There's one show. He's like, all right, we're going to do three of these. We're only doing three. And that's all I want to do. I know everybody wants me to do it. So he like asked people what their big turnoffs are or something like yeah, that red or flags, red or flags or whatever. And it's, and it's funny. He does a good job with it. He's really good at it. But you can tell he's like, this is not this is not what I want to do. I want to do comedy. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to YouTube for we did Matt Rife's last one, didn't we? Yes. Isn't we did. he the one that uh, it was about the uh the flashlight? Yes. And his, his grandpa bought yeah. a flag, he bought his grandpa a flashlight. <laughs> yeah, thank you for saying flash. <laughs> <laughs> um all right. There are tons of these things that have come out. Oh, uh, on the 90 pound gorilla or whatever. Uh, 90 pound gorilla. Yep. Does most of them. Um, I mean, so many. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Uh, okay. Guy by the name of Louis Katz. Louis okay. Katz. I know Louis Katz. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, he, he's, he's, I know he's very well respected. Uh, I've heard his name a million times, but I haven't. I, I've probably seen like, you know, clips from a set and stuff like that. Sure. Haven't really seen uh, a full set of his, I don't think. So, okay. I'm Luke probably has, the same way. I just heard him on Comedy Central radio or serious radio a lot. The best comedian you've never heard of. <laughs> that's a good one. I like it. Except we both heard of him. Louis Katz. That's right. That's right. So uh, that's on YouTube. You know what? He, you know, it's called that. And I bet he's talking about somebody else in it. Could be. I guarantee it. Yeah. It doesn't seem knowing, hearing some of the stuff he does. I don't see him as a guy who's telling you he's the best comedian yeah. that you've never heard of. Yeah. That seems a little uh, off putting, but yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's seems a little, little uh, Matt Reifish. Oh, well, yeah. We'll go, <laughs> we'll go with old Lewis Katz. All right. Louis Katz, it is. And then uh, I'm going to do. Let's do the Mount Rushmore of Cincinnati Bengal mm. cornerbacks. Oh, no, because that de- uh, defensive backs. No, that's too many safeties and everything. Let's do, let's just make, let's start it off with quarterbacks. Okay. That's too easy. easy. It's all going to be the same three. Let's do wide receivers. Okay. Wide receivers. Mount Rushmore, Cincinnati Bengal wide receivers. Got it. Got it. All right. Yeah. That sounds good. Well, there you go. That's a, that's a wrap for this week's quick one, bud. That's a nice quick podcast. Uh, yes, sir. I got to get out early. So next week is the day before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Do you have anything going on the day before Thanksgiving? Are we yeah, doing I've a podcast? A, I've got a podcast to do. Okay, good. Day. Parker asked me if he could come down and maybe do the podcast again with us hey. for Thanksgiving. He asked me on the way home from basketball today. Heck yeah. I said, bud, you're going to have to give us a list of stuff to talk about because last time he sat in the middle of us and almost fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, I'm going to, so quarterbacks is probably better. No, what did I do? Wide receiver. So he'll have his own wide receiver group. That'll be good. Mm -hmm. He'll probably say Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd and T Higgins Higgins, and then throw somebody else on there. Uh, Mm -hmm. Irv Smith or somebody like that. Oh, he's a tight end. Uh, Bengals play tomorrow, by the way, I'll be in Toledo, which is going to suck. Thursday night game. Um, but yeah, so. Parker, uh, Parker, I told Parker that we'd get a, a list of stuff that he can talk about with us. Very nice. Because I want him to talk if he's going to come down here and do this. Sure. All That's right. fun. Or he can. Or like, well, and he might. And he might. He might sit over there like he did with the aliens. The Christmas episode. The yeah. Annual yeah. Parker the annual Parker Christmas. sitting in the Christmas <laughs> episode. Yep. Absolutely. That's uh, every year Christmas time. But he's, I think he wants to step his game up. 
I think he's he's got his own podcast, Talking Beef. Um, so you know maybe we maybe we talk up a little Talking Beef action. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, it's basketball season, so his little buddy will be over here doing it more often and uh, get them going. Good. All right. I'm excited for it. It sounds good. Until then, don't forget to turn your headlights off. Stop right off the bat. Oh, it's still recording. Just, uh, yeah.